Amen. You cannot sing about heaven as a Christian that is trying to do what we're supposed to do and the struggles that it all comes with. You can't sing or hear or listen to a song with that subject matter and not get excited. Amen. Because it's true, there is a day coming. Yes. Great day. Yeah. Well, all that she's saying about it more. Yeah. Be real. Right. They talked about it in the Bible said that day is not far. Yes. I believe in my heart that day is not far. And I can't wait till it gets here. Amen. Can you imagine the joy that we have here over hearing a song? Can you imagine the joy we'll have when we see him? <laughs> when it's face to face. And it's completely done, the life, the toils, the, the hardships is all behind us, and all we've got is eternity with Him. I can't wait, can you? Oh, what a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. I appreciate you being back tonight. Um, I pray that God will speak to us again tonight and help us and uh, give us something. I hope you pray that. I hope you, when you come to church, you pray that God will speak to you. Don't pray He'll speak to me. Believe me, he's telling me. He's giving me an earful. Most of it's because I'm wrong or I've done something wrong. But I hope when we come to church, we come to church praying for God to help us. Amen. Like Jackie shared in her testimony, you know, uh, for, to give everything to him and say, Lord, I need you. Yes. Nothing wrong with that because I'm telling you, I need him, don't you? Yes. And uh, as we'll look at tonight, if you've got your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to 2 Samuel over in your Old Testament. 2 Samuel. I want to preach tonight on just when I needed him most. Just when I needed him most. When I, uh, well, I guess between Bryce and Chase coming in, Bryce had been born. Chase wasn't quite uh, here yet. I don't, not sure. Uh, but uh, I had to, for financial reasons, I had to take on a second job, and I took on a job at the uh, YMCA down in Cleveland. And I enjoyed that work. It was great work. Uh, worked there on nights and weekends mostly. But uh, one thing that I did, as I, I worked there, then I got to be a, a supervisor. And one thing I had to do when I was there was kind of fill in for everybody. You know, if, if there was a department and somebody had to go to lunch or somebody was out or they had to step out, you know, I'd have to go to that department and take care of things for them. Well, back then, my favorite place to be was the weight room or the basketball gym. I, I would voluntarily go there. But there was one part of the place that I would go, and it always made me nervous because I just never felt really qualified to be there, and that was the pool, the swimming pool, the indoor pool that they have down there. From time to time, I'd have to go in there, and the lifeguards would have to step out, and they'd say, can you watch the pool for just a second? I've got to go in here to test the water, to fill out a form, whatever they had to do. And I'll tell you, that made me nervous. I just knew while I was there something was going to happen. I'd look around that pool, and if somebody splashed too hard, I was ready, you know. <laughs> you look at that. I was involved in some of the trainings for the lifeguards. I knew a little bit about what they did, but by far not exactly what they did. But um, David here makes a reference to something similar to that very thing about God being there for him and rescuing him out of the depths of the sea just before doom was about to come in. And it has that idea of, of God reaching down and rescuing him just before he was to drown, like a lifeguard would today, how they would swoop down when someone's in trouble and, and rescue them. So look at this with me, if you will. 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22. Um, in your leisure, in your study, chapter 21 leads us up to this point. Chapter 21, you'll see the uh, Philistines are back. And David is at war with them. And towards the end of chapter 21, you'll see uh, the giants, the brothers of Goliath, some of the family members. Some of them's got six fingers, some of them bigger than him. They all show up, and they end up being killed by some of uh, David's men. And this was a hot battle. This was a very tough fight for David. Once this battle ended, he began to praise God. And that's what chapter 22 in essence really is is David giving glory to God for this victory and he says some things here and I want us to look at this 2nd Samuel 22 uh, we'll read verses 14 through 19 2nd Samuel 22 uh, 14 
through 19. This is just a portion of David's words, but um, with this thought on our hearts tonight, just when I needed him most. Um, verse 14, if you've got it tonight, say amen. amen. The Bible says, The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared, and the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. My Father, I stand before you. Lord, it's just been so good today. Lord, it was good this morning. It's been good all day just to be here. Uh, even yesterday on a Saturday when we could come together and try to help people in this community. And God, it's just been so good. I just enjoy getting to be here with your people, with those of like mind and like heart. And God, we know we've got to go out there tomorrow and we've got to face everything we've got to face. Everybody's got something different. Uh, but God, I, tonight we need you. Uh, it's already been said, but we, we need your help. And God, as I stand here, I'm not in any shape nor authority to help anybody. And Lord, the truth be told, I need more help than most people. But Lord, I know that you are a great God. And I know that tonight you will help us. You will give us that which we need, whether it's salvation for the lost soul, comfort for the hurting, or healing for the broken. We know, God, that you can do that. So, Father, we stand behind you now looking to Jesus for help and guidance. We pray your spirit would have his way with everything we do here tonight. And, God, we love you. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you be seated. Thank you for standing with me. David said there in verse 17, he sent from above, he took me and drew me out of many waters. And I want you to think in your mind, David is floundering in the water. God reaches down and just snatches him right out just before the end is near. Uh, luckily, in my time at the YMCA, I did not have to jump in to rescue anybody. And it probably wouldn't have worked out too well because I had supervisor clothes on and the lifeguards had bathing suits on. So it might not have worked out too well had I gone in in real deep water trying to help somebody. But I'm thankful I never had to. But I did see them from time to time have to jump in and help someone. And I always admired them because I've got a bad trouble that when I sit down for too long, I go to sleep. Does anybody else have that trouble? <laughs> Grace and son, you... That's the, I believe we're, I believe actually excused for something right there. But I do. I was telling somebody this morning, I was at the Sonic a couple of years ago, and I they took my order, and the air conditioner was on. I got cool, and of course, I sat there for more than five minutes. Next thing I know, you know, I opened my eyes, there's three people looking at me. <laughs> They're looking in the car, and I guess they thought I'd kicked it, you know. And they just, they said I was okay, and they laughed and went on, you know, about their way. But I'm bad to sit down for a minute and do that. And I've always admired the lifeguard, their ability to sit there in that chair and literally watch their section of the pool or wherever they're at. Some of them were lifeguards over the ocean. And watch those sections with, without distraction, without, um, you know, going to sleep. I, I wouldn't make it as a lifeguard. You know, they scan that and they're just watching. You know, they're just watching for something to happen that they need to get involved in. And I don't know if you know this, but they're trained on diving into the pool from the chairs they sit in. Do you know that? I wouldn't do that either. Just I'd say, hang on, let me climb down <laughs> and ease in here to help you. But those chairs, if you go to the pool, you'll see them sitting up and they're in them. They're trained to dive from those platforms, even into shallow water, like if it's a small child, into three feet of water. They're trained to dive into that to get there. It's amazing. Other things, and you may be some, maybe a lifeguard here, you know more about that than I do. But it was always amazing to me. And when I read this and I thought of God, I thought, man, that is amazing. David turned this victory into this tremendous analogy as he's praising God here. And he has this picture where God just reaches down in the middle of the storm and swoops him out. Does that remind you of anybody in the New Testament who had to be wrenched out of the water? Oh, Peter, you know. When the storms got the best of him, Jesus reached down and took hold of him. Can I tell you, I believe Peter would say he was there just when I needed him the most. Jesus was there. David sings in this psalm and he's telling us just when I thought uh, all hope was gone, he was there just when I needed him the most. Folks, I'm here to tell you we've got a God who will be there when you need him. He will be there even when you think you don't need him. Thank God he's there. Thank God he watches us. He goes with us. He will stay with us. 
David was in a battle. Now, David was a mighty warrior. David had some amazing uh, generals. He had some amazing warriors that were part of his army. You can go through and read it. Man, they, David got, got to wanting to drink of water from a fountain in another town. Them boys took off and killed on the hammer just to get him a cup of water. I mean, these guys, would they do anything for the king. He had warriors. But David went up against those Philistines again. Here come the giants. Everything around him. And he got scared. And he fell into some situations. I want to show this to you. Some things, I guess, that maybe a lifeguard would see. Same things that God seen, saw, rather, here with David. Go to verse 14. I want you to see in David's distress, he was there when he needed him the most. Verse 14 says, The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Can I tell you, David was in distress. He looked out and he saw those armies. He saw the battle. He saw these enormous foes, and his heart started to give. He started to wonder, can I do this? And he's saying, just when I thought my nerves was going to get the best of me here, God thundered. What he's saying is God showed up. God came on the scene. And it wasn't a sneaking in to the situation. Have you ever heard thunder so loud it scared you? Boy, I have. You'll be doing your business and all of a sudden you're doing, going about your day. You're walking through the house. Boom! You know, the house is shaking. It's a bomb felt like go off. Thunder is a powerful thing. My little brother, when we was growing up, every time it thundered, he'd run and hide. And I don't care if he's here. I'd tell it anyway. But he'd, he'd take a pillar or cushion and hide his face in it and walk like that. And if nobody got at him, he'd just walk into stuff. Jim, you ever do that when you was little? No. no, okay. He'd put that pillar cushion. He scared death. It would thunder. He would just, you know, cower down. And Lord help if he saw lightning, it was over with. He's a big chicken, is what he was. That's where you get it from, boys, from your uncle Matt. But um, scared of thunder. It thundered, and he would just be terrified of it. Folks, I'm telling you, there's something about thunder. You ever heard a thunder roll across the sky? You hear it start, and then here it comes. I'm telling you, thunder... Lots of people heard it. Lots of people seen it. David said when God showed up, it was like a massive thunder. He spoke, and everybody knew God was on the scene. Folks, you know what? David was in distress until he realized God was there. You know what David realized then? It's going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Church, let me tell you something. Whatever you're going up against, it's tough. I got no doubts. It's hard. I got no doubts. But the same God that thundered from heaven for David will thunder from heaven for you. Amen. Just when you need him the most, he'll be there. David was in distress. He looked at, now David had already beat the Philistines. He'd done chopped off Goliath's head. He had done, done so many wonderful things, but this battle, something about it distressed him. Read the whole song. He's so excited. He's praising God out of his shoes for this. And he gets down there and he says, and God, he, you're just like a thunder. Your voice thundered from heaven and your voice just changed everything. You need God to speak? He will. When you need him the most, he'll be there. Even when you think you don't need him, he'll be there. My friend, I'll tell you, when you're in distress, he's there. Not only that, look in verse 15. I want you to see this. Not only David's in distress, but David's danger. Look in verse 15. It got worse for David. He said, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning, and discomfited them. Now, what David's saying here is they were so scattered out, the enemy was, they were like ants. They were everywhere. He looked to his left, there was a company of Philistines. He looked to his right, there was a company of Philistines. He looked to the middle, there's the giants, the other four, and a slew with him. They were everywhere. He was in danger. Can I tell you what the devil wants? He wants you out, right? Out of the service of God, out of the witness of the gospel, out of church, out of the word, out of your prayers. He wants you out. If he had his way, he'd just kill us. But God won't let him. But can I tell you, David looked out and he saw danger. Church, I look out today in this world and I see danger. People don't like us. Do you realize that? Man. The world don't like Jesus. We talked about that this morning. I won't rehash all that. But there's danger out there. David saw danger. But David said, when I was in danger, God 
showed up. And look how he references this. He said, and he sent out arrows and scattered them. God showed up and it was like, um, have you ever seen those war movies where they'll have a couple of hundred archers and they'll fire into the garrisons or the battalions overneath and these arrows just rain down like uh, rain and they'll just wipe out a front line or they'll wipe out a, a, a pl whatever's there. David said, that's what God did. Just when we thought we was about to be overtaken, just when we thought we was about to be killed, God started wiping them down. God started to mow them down like arrows falling, like lightning striking from the sky. Is there anything more powerful than lightning? If you've ever seen lightning hit a tree or uh, lightning unfortunately has struck people, lightning is an enormously powerful thing. But the God of all heaven harnesses the power. He's more powerful than the lightning. David said, when God started to fight on my behalf, the danger went away. And all of a sudden, look what he says. He said, uh, and he discomfited them. That word means to, to make noise or put them in commotion. That's what that word means. David was in commotion, but God turned it and put it on them. David was afraid for his life, but God turned it and put them on them. Church, what is this world going to take away from you that's making you so nervous, that makes us so afraid to live for Jesus that stops us from doing like Jackie was saying earlier that stops us from doing what we know in our heart what are we afraid of what are they going to take away and I ask you that question with the emphasis pointed at me old preacher said one time you can't point your finger at others because there's three more pointing right back at you right yeah. what are we afraid of what is it that they can take away that's a good question what can they take away well, they can kill me. Can they? Can they? The yeah. Bible says that uh, the child of God, the body can die, yeah. sure. But if I read my Bible correctly, God's going to bring that thing back one day and change it anyhow. Yeah. And the soul can't die. Yeah. It will live forever. They may take my fleshly body. What have you lost? Think about it, Christian. What have you lost? Let's say they killed you, which in America, right now, that's not happening. But it could. They take your life. Where are you going to go? Now, if you're a Christian, you better know where you're going to go, okay? If you're not sure where you're going to go, let's get that settled before you leave tonight, okay? If they take your life, you're going home. Can they take that from you? No. It's amazing when we stop and think of what we're so afraid of. At the grand scheme of it all, God says, I'm bigger than all that. <laughs> what Jesus did for me is greater than all of that. David was in danger. He looked around, but he says, you know what? All of a sudden, this danger I felt, God showed me that he was there, and I didn't have anything to fear. You know, the Bible says over 365 times, fear not. Don't be afraid. You know why he says that? Because we bucked the chickens. Can we be honest? Bible says we like goats, sheep. I believe we like chickens too because we're scared. God says, don't be afraid. All right? Now, David's distress, David's danger. Now, David was even afraid and pending death. Look at verse 16. David's pending death. And the channels of the sea, now this is metaphorically, and the channels of the sea appeared, talking about the great wave of the enemy, and the foundations of the world were discovered and the rebuke at the rebuking of the Lord and the blast of the breast of the breath of his nostrils. What's he saying? He's saying that they were about to engulf me. Have you ever seen the river up here, the dam be released? Have you ever saw that? I hope you've never got caught in it. There's been people caught in that. But if you're close to it, you'll be out there wading or fishing and you might hear, in the, if you're close to the uh, release point, you'll hear the siren, you know. And, uh, well, it's coming to rain, ain't it? Praise the Lord. We need it. We need it, sure enough. Fill that dump tank up. We'll go jump in it before we go. Amen? <laughs> but when you go up to the river, you'd be in, you know, ankle-deep water. And when they let that out, before you know it, you're in trouble. I was out in it one time, and it was about ankle-deep. I didn't notice it. Didn't pay a bit of attention. And now it's knee-deep. And I thought, your first thought is, well, I've wandered over, you know, to, uh, deeper part when you realize you didn't 
And that water's getting swift, and all of a sudden it's, a, it's approaching up to you. And you know you're in trouble, right? This is what David's saying, but on a grander scale. He's saying they were just coming around me. I was going to die. Death was imminent. The waters were compassing about me. You ever been in the ocean? You ever been in the ocean, had a big wave come over top of you? When uh, the kids were small, we took them to the river, and we got this on video. We got Bryce out there in the breakers right there on the shore as he was playing, you know. And uh, I've got sadistic tendencies, I guess. But Bryce was right there, and I saw a big wave coming. I didn't say nothing to him. I'm a horrible father, aren't I? That wave come, picked him up, throwed him, twisted him, you know, bounced him around. He didn't go anywhere. He was just right. You remember that, don't you? You're a bad mother, too, if I'm a bad father, because we left that happen. <laughs> But I got over. But that, that he was being overplayed. That one year old, that breaker got him, boy, it throwed him, you know. And I was watching him, you know. He wasn't in deep water. He got up and he, <laughs> he had that look about him. I'd been out further. I went out as a kid one time to Florida, and uh, I got in what they call the rip current. Yeah, y'all been there? Hey, before you know it, buddy, I was in bad shape. There wasn't no lifeguard drink. <laughs> I noticed that shores are going that way. I'm a going that way. And there's big stuff under me that's probably hungry. That's bad news. And all of a sudden, here come a barge or a big ocean liner, them waves just come up. And the time you get back up, David said that's what it was like. David said this battle, it had me. I thought I was dying. But just when I thought I was about dead, there's a hand reached down. <laughs> and pulled me to safety. He said there was something happened. Just when all hope was gone, just when it was all over with, somebody reached down and got me. Church, do you remember when Jesus reached down and got you? Oh, I was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand. Where do you have to reach to find you at? I tell you what, I was marred up in it, wasn't you? I wasn't that old, but I was still marred up in it. And he pulled me out. And he set me on solid ground. Matter of fact, he set me on the rock of ages. He set me in Christ. David said he rescued me. Let me show you one more thing, and I'm done. Let me show you the most wonderful part about all this. I told you about the lifeguards at the YMCA. The thing about those lifeguards is when it was time for them to leave, guess what? They left. When it was time for me to leave, guess what I did? I left. When it was time for them to come into work, they came in when it was time for them to go to work. You see, the lifeguards have to be paid to do their job. The lifeguards sometimes had to be gotten on to by their supervisor for not giving their best effort towards their job. You see, those people they're watching out there, they're not doing it because they want to. They're doing it because they're being paid to. It's their job to do it. If they clock out, they're going to tell the other lifeguard, you handle it. Right? Can I tell you what God does? Jump to verse 20 and we're done. Verse 20. He brought me forth also into a large place. Look at this. He delivered me because he delighted in me. <laughs> Can I let you in on a little secret? He loves you. David said he didn't rescue me because I prayed right. He didn't rescue me because uh, I was going to win this battle no matter what. He didn't rescue him for any of those reasons. David said he rescued me because he loves me. No other reason. Church, listen to me. He loves you. Don't you think for a cotton-picking minute that he loved David more than he loves you? Now, the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. David, your Christ's going to be on his throne. All that's great stuff, good stuff, marvelous stuff. Let me share something with you. He loves you too. You are not second rate. You are not worthless. You are not just a byproduct of the thought of salvation that says, well, if i got time to help Mark, I'll help him. If I've got time to comfort Ron, I'll comfort him. He loves you as much as he loved David. And if David was in the midst of all that and God reached down and pulled him out, my friend, he will do that for you. If you'll just hold on, hold to him, trust him, follow him, believe in him, he will be there when you need him. 
He'll help you. I believe we could probably all give a little testimony to when God's helped us. But the thing about humans is we forget, don't we? The old song, remind me, remind me, dear Lord, you know. You know why we sing a song like that? Because we forget. We forget how God has rescued us. We forget how God has provided for us. We forget how God has saved us over and over. I'm not talking about you. So I'm talking about just getting you out of things, saving you over and over and over again. He's always been there. He always will. Why? Because you prayed good? Because you come to Sunday night church? Amen, Jimmy. That's a good bunch to have. You Sunday night crowd. Wednesday night crowd. Amen. Boy, that's special. <laughs> Nothing wrong Sunday mornings, but man, when you come on another night, you dedicated. <laughs> hey, in the pastor's mind, you're going to be in somebody. You're going to be in an office at the church. If you come two to three services, one service you're on the fence, two to three services, man, you're going to help run this church, okay? <laughs> That's just the way it is. If you didn't get anything else I said tonight, he loves you. He delights to help you. Don't think God's up there taking pleasure in our pain. He's not finding joy in our sorrows. That's not by it. Is there sorrow? You better believe it, brother. Is there heartaches and troubles on every hand? Yes. Man's days are full of trouble. That's not God's fault. That's my fault. But when I call upon the name of the Lord, He'll be there. Just remember, Peter, what did he say? Lord, save me. As simple as it gets. David looked out across that battlefield. He saw Philistines. He saw warriors. He saw bloodshed. He got distressed. He saw danger. He knew death was at his doorstep. But then verse 17, he sent from above. He took me and drew me out. God will take care of you. If you'll trust Him. If you'll believe. If you'll lean on Him. What am I going to do about this or that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a clue. I've got my own problems. Right? You've got your problems. If I can't answer mine, I may not have the answer for yours. But I know one answer that fits everything. Amen. Trust and obey. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way <laughs> to be happy in Jesus. I tell you what I can do for you, though, is I can pray for you. You know what you can do for me? Help me a whole lot is you pray for me. The Bible says for us to bear one another's burdens. We're to talk to each other when we're hurting, when we're down, when we're in trouble. Tell each other. Talk to each other. Call each other. Let's talk about it. And you know, at the end of the day, we may or may not have an answer, but there's one thing we can all do, and it's pray. And then God, very God, when the time is right, We'll reach down, and he'll get us one more time. Amen. Until that last day when he, for the final time, set, gets us. But he's not going to set us in a large place. He's going to take us all the way home. <laughs> that one last time, he's going to come down. He's going to take us all home with him. We won't have to worry about it no more. Until then, church, just believe. Just trust him. He's there. He hears you. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Give it all to him. And when the time's right, when you need him, he will be there. I believe the Word of God says that, and I'm going to take that. Amen? Let's stand together all around the church tonight.